Despite the tireless efforts of the international community, large stocks of surplus small arms, light weapons and conventional ammunition still remain on the territory of many countries. Responsible for the deaths of at least a quarter of a million people each year worldwide, their availability prolongs armed conflicts, impedes post-conflict rehabilitation and slows down economic growth. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe works hard to solve this problem. There is no other similar inclusive venue to address all those problems, particularly in difficult times where there is increasing differences of opinions among the members of the family on how they should do business together. By providing practical assistance to its participating states to destroy surplus weapons and ammunition, the OSCE aims to fight the diversion of these weapons to terrorists and criminal groups, to help countries look after their own stockpiles securely, and to create the foundations for prosperity and long-lasting peace. In summer 2004, nearly eight tons of ammunition and piles of small arms and weapons sat in a warehouse near Dushan Bay, just 100 meters from a residential area and only 50 meters from a kindergarten. With summer temperatures reaching highs of 50 degrees Celsius, the chances of a fire that could set off explosions inflicting damage injuries and possibly deaths within several kilometers was a threat too dangerous to be ignored. The OSCE tries to assist its participating states in uh, destroying leftover stockpiles of small arms and ammunition which either come from the Cold War era or from other developments and which are a danger to the environment. The OSCE developed a comprehensive program to destroy the surpluses, upgrade storage conditions, develop better management capacities and reduce the chance of dangerous material falling into the wrong hands. Following the success of the project in Dushanbe, the Tajik government asked the OSCE for help in addressing similar risks throughout the country. OSCE experts have since visited dozens of sites, including those on the border with Afghanistan. In 2009, the program was successfully completed. Thirty-four tons of ammunition and 25,000 small arms were destroyed. These projects have contributed to ensuring security for the people of Tajikistan and a safer world for everyone. In this sense, it is a key element in providing stability, in uh, creating trust, and uh, it is in itself a confidence building measure. Man-portable air defense systems, or MAN-PADS, are shoulder-launched guided missile systems designed to destroy aircraft. According to UN estimates, over 30 aircraft have been shot down by terrorists using this type of weapon, causing the deaths of over 600 people. No country in the world can cope with the problem of surplus weapons alone. Success can only be achieved through international cooperation. In October 2008, the Defence Minister of Cyprus made a formal request to the OSCE for assistance with the destruction of 324 man pads. By June 2009, the OSCE had initiated a programme and destroyed the missiles. OSC has been involved in destroying uh, man pads, uh, uh, short-range uh, 
anti-air weapon systems uh, for the Republic of Cyprus. It has been done in a remarkably short period of time and has been uh, quite successful, including for the pedestals of those, uh, of those missiles. Uh, and I think we're, we are very proud that we have allowed the Republic of Cyprus to gain the know-how and the technology uh, needed to do the jobs themselves for the next uh, following rounds of destructions. The chair of the OSCE's Forum for Security Cooperation, Ilya Giorgadze from Georgia, attended the destruction ceremony and commended Cypriot efforts to contribute to building more security and trust in Europe. Representatives of international organizations, the local community and journalists observed the final destruction of these dangerous weapons. Whatever requests we might receive from participating states, we always have uh, quite a few in stock and uh, we need to get the financial and technical support from participating states to be able to address those requests. In Belarus, the OSCE is working in partnership with the United Nations Development Programme, focusing initially on four out of 15 small arms storage sites most of which are located within residential areas. An OSCE assessment in 2004 concluded that there was a significant danger that surplus weapons could end up in the wrong hands. Because many of the artillery depots and military units were located within residential areas, reliable security measures were required to prevent attempts to steal and pass on these weapons. The project aims to solve the problems of secure storage and management through a range of practical measures, including repairing the physical infrastructure of the storage sites, providing extra security through the installation of perimeter fences, and developing software for inventory management of the weapons stockpiles. By definition, OSC has to operate in a way that uh, ensures maximum safety for the people who are involved in the process of the destruction of uh, the various small arms, light weapons and ammunitions, and uh, for the broader environment. Mélange is a highly dangerous liquid rocket fuel component. A remnant of the Cold War, this nitrogen-based oxidizer was widely used to power anti-aircraft rockets during the 1950s and 1960s. After these weapons were withdrawn from service in the former states of the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact, several thousand tons of this hazardous liquid remained in storage containers scattered throughout the region. While Mélange itself is non-flammable, it reacts extremely aggressively when mixed with organic substances, self-igniting and reaching extreme temperatures. If they were to be spread into the environment, it would have potentially very adverse consequences not only from the immediate environment, but from the populations. Much of the Mélange is stored in containers, which are slowly corroding. If a cracked or leaking tank containing 100 cubic meters of fuel were to burst, a two kilometer wide deadly cloud would rise, producing a zone of death within which all biological life is destroyed. In certain weather conditions, the cloud could be carried up to 80 kilometers away. The OSCE has successfully completed three projects to eliminate Melange in Armenia, Albania, and in partnership with the United Nations Development Programme in Montenegro. What we're doing right now is we're taking the oxidizer from the original tanks. It goes into a mixing tank. We dilute it down to a material, basically nitric acid, to a level that's transportable. 
as normal commercial grade uh, uh, nitric acid. Recently, the organization signed a contract with the Ministry of Defense in Ukraine, which has launched the largest ever project to be executed by the OSCE to eliminate this toxic fuel. We have now a contract to destroy a first batch of this melange, at least uh, 3,000 tons. The work has started. The first trains are in the process of uh, uh, leaving one of the uh, stockpiling sites in Ukraine and being sent over to the factories where they will be destroyed. Due to the risks associated with the elimination of Melange, these projects have to be conducted with special care and with the engagement of highly qualified experts. Be it the conversion into fertilizer in Armenia, or incineration, as was the case in Albania and Montenegro, the OSCE and its partners aim to achieve a safe and environmentally friendly solution. In Ukraine, under continuous monitoring and rigorous quality assurance by the OSCE, over 3,000 tons of melange will be removed and transported, batch by batch, to chemical production facilities in Russia. There, the melange will be recycled into useful chemical products for civilian commercial use. This is a, a very exciting project. It is the biggest project OSCE has ever undertaken. It will take quite some time because after the 3,000 tons, we will still have uh, quite, quite a lot to do. But we've made a, a very good start and uh, we will be uh, continuing to make all our efforts to make it successful. The OSCE will continue its efforts to help states to secure and dispose of surpluses of small arms and light weapons and conventional ammunition. But their ability to do this depends on the political will and determination of states to address this problem, and on donors being willing to commit time, money and expertise to this persistent source of global instability. There is still a, a very big backlog of work and for this we need those, those resources, we need the technical support and uh, we need the political will uh, from the participating states.